What's going on everyone and welcome back. As you can see, we are up here at Southside Sales and Service in Massachusetts to start doing some snowmobile videos for the year. Um, it is a different time of year than we're normally up here. It is very warm, we are sweating, but we're up here doing some snowmobile stuff. And as you can see behind me, the first 2023 has finally showed, well, I can't say finally showed up, has already showed up. Um, Bruce got his last 2022 about a month ago and now 23s are starting to show up so this is a polaris switchback xc850 so this is the 146 this is the the step down from your assault and <clears throat> we're just going to kind of go over and i know we've talked we've gone over all these sleds before but you know this is 23 some people may not have seen the videos last year so we're going to you know go through it and you know give you guys a little bit of breakdown of what we have and we have the one and only Bruce himself. So me and Bruce are just going to kind of pop through here. We tried to find anything that was new that, you know, honestly wasn't released through Polaris, any like little fine detail. And we found two things so far, and that's really about it. So Bruce, take over. Hey, guys. You know, no, no, no better time to talk about snowmobiles than when it's 95 degrees. Oh, <laughs> yeah. as as it's, it's been the hottest week of the year. Oh, yeah. Easily. Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, so... Assault, as we know, has been one of the most popular snowmobiles the last three years running for Polaris in the Northeast, for sure. Uh, the XC is the same snowmobile front to back, except for the shock package. And shock package, you know, again, we've talked a lot about springs and shock package and all that kind of thing, and uh, everybody seems to really like that. Um, just a reminder of Fox uh, QS3, one, two, three. Um, one is what the valving is two is 20 percent stiffer three is 80 percent stiffer so big change on all four of the shocks on this because all four have the same setup you want to turn it and and lean on the front so we could see um, yeah. i don't know if we'll be able to see it too good on video but we should be able to yeah i mean this here here's your your normal going down the trail we'll go to number two i can feel it just a little bit you guys probably can't you're going to see this though that's 80 percent so you're you know huge change you know one thing nice about that is if you're running an assault and you got a uh, gas caddy on the back or you do have a two up seat on it you throw somebody two up on it and you bump the springs up you go up to number three that's a, a nice big change for running that extra weight right and again same that. thing those that three clicks are also on the two rear shocks yeah yeah don't people know we're trying to video yeah <laughs> Uh, so that being said, as far as the workings of the rear suspension, we talked about this not being a coupled rear, uh, where we have the coupler blocks like on a VR1 or an XCR, which we're going to go over after. Yeah, we'll, but... we'll just have one right here, so we'll just show them. Yeah. So again, coupler blocks, you know, that's your crossover bar, but these are your actual blocks. So when that rear suspension goes back, it actually comes in contact with that. On these assaults and XC switchbacks, they don't have that. Right, they, where the front shock, or where the rear shock mounts to the front torque arm, very different. Um, it's not independent swinging behind the, the front torque arm, it's actually attached about halfway up the torque arm. So when that front arm moves, it wants to move the back. So it does give that coupling effect, it just mm -hmm. works differently. Right. Um, we, I kind of really like the suspension. It's, it covers a lot of territory of riders from, yeah. um, mid low speed to a high speed rider it's mm -hmm. just a little bit of shock valving for somebody that's heavier yeah <clears throat> and uh we know a lot of people are fan of this rear suspension so we have some ideas for this winter and that's all i'm gonna say but we're gonna we're gonna see what we could come up with yeah and that's all you're getting for now moving on yeah so other than that assault and our 146 stuff uh risers an inch taller than say a vr1 so just a little bit different rider position on these uh, this unit has the normal gauge which you're going to see on anything xc or some of the smaller models anything vr1 or boost stuff is going to have uh, an assault or uh, that kind of thing is going to come with the big gauge the 7s gauge should come mm -hmm. should come should come yeah. mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they did limit us though this year. No matter how many snowmobiles you got, a set a number of gauges. So if it wasn't a VR1 or something that actually came with a gauge, they gave you this many. Mm -hmm. That's all you got. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, other than that, uh, we did see this uh, other change, small change here, just for maybe vibration dampening. It's just this little rubber clip-on thing right here. That so your that, door pin, yeah, panel when it pins, pins in there so you don't get a little buzz right there. That's that's kind of nice. I mean, you know, realistically, these stone wheels, this design is it's just plain awesome. Yeah. So it goes awesome. It comes apart quick. Comes apart quick for servicing. But yes, you do have those little loose areas that you'll hear a little buzz or something, and that's what they're going after, which just makes it just that much less you're listening to when you're going down the trail. Right. So we found those, and then we also found, um, and they did have the battery charging, like uh, battery tender ports, but they were on the inside of the door last year, I believe. Um, it was that, and then they had where they were down, further down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right, down here too. So this year they actually put this super nice um, mounted with a rubber cap on it. Yeah. So for easy access, easy storage. Um, which is always good. I mean, what do you say for batteries? Well, I mean, they're putting the tender on their um, coupler so that to remind you to put yeah. a tender on it through the summer. Um, that's, you know, in the, in the old days, it's like take your battery out, charge it once in a while. You know, obviously we all know that these small batteries don't have a long life. Right. The best thing you can do for them is keep them charged. Uh, they do not like to be dead. And then you got to bring them back to life again. So. So having that is a um, is definitely a, a better way to do it is to leave it in and now you don't have to go in, unbolt it, take it out. You can just plug the tender in, leave it in for 24 hours or whatever mm -hmm. every once in a while and it'll keep it up to snuff. I, I think that's the best. Yeah. And then as he was just talking about that, I remember the, all, the other thing that is different from an XC to an Assault is a rail brace and then a fourth wheel in the rear axle so that is one one thing that the xc does not have i believe that's an option you could do a fourth wheel you know in the accessory book and yeah. mm -hmm. rail braces yeah but on an xc it does not come with them right yeah so but that's it it's first 23 to show up through the door which is exciting it's a you know a good sign uh hopefully we'll start seeing you know in the computers a bunch of other stuff move along and when we get any more updates on you know when vr1s and and boost and xers are getting built and, and starting to ship uh, you know we're going to update you guys as soon as we can but as for now you know this is this is the the 23 we got a voyager too that came in so this is the 23 voyager that also came in we wanted just to touch on this and show you guys kind of what the difference was um very similar sled same platform same chassis everything like that same rear suspension as the xc that we just went over um it's just more of a workhorse, so it's uh, a little bit skinnier. Uh, do we figure out how much? Yeah, you can adjust it from 39 to 41 inches, whereas yep. a, a regular sled that we're usually driving regular width is 42 and a half on center. Right, so a little bit skinnier to get in tighter places if you need to. Um, comes with the cargo rack, I guess we'll call that. Mm -hmm. Cargo rack, same controls and everything as an XC, exactly what we just went over on the orange sled. And uh, this one is available. So if you are in the market for a Voyager and you think this will be a fit for you, reach out to the guys at Southside Sales and Service. With the Voyager, the main thing that you get, again, it's like you said, it's like a workhorse. They give you the, the Monarch bumper, which you know gives you a little bit more protection there and going down the front. Uh, the extra high windshield. And then it still does have gas shocks in it. They're not adjustable but they are rebuildable so they're a, a gas internal floating piston shock that we can take apart change the oil valve it if we wanted to especially if in the rear again these are so tunable if somebody was using it we could pull it apart and valve it and make it so that it's better for what suited for what somebody's doing mm -hmm. and then obviously there's normal spring options in the back too just like with all of our assault stuff or indie stuff mm -hmm. and then it comes with a gripper ski so a little bit wider ski Again, figuring, you know, you're towing something, so it, it's going to need a little extra help turning. Yeah. So, awesome sled, awesome, you know, model that is offered from Polaris. So, if, again, if you guys are in the market, 
hit them up. Like I said, 23 showing up. You know, it's 95 degrees outside, but we're here putting sleds together and getting yep. ready for winter. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, want to say hey, put it down in the comments, and I will get back to you guys. See ya. Thank you.